I guess the best way to frame this, or not the best way, but the clickbaity way to frame this, and that'll lead into the discussion of what you might be watching for, is this over? Is there anything the Mavericks can do to? We've seen teams go down 2 0 in the past. We've seen Kyrie have two bad games in the NBA Finals to start off. I think it was 2016, and then he comes back like a man on fire. Are these finals over, Grant? Two two uh, factors compel me to say they are not over. The first is the cliche of the home team's got to lose for a series to really start. So <laughs> by definition, this cannot be over. The other one is just like, I'm kind of still shell-shocked from how certain I've been about other series in these playoffs being pretty well decided and then not being the case. The Denver-Minnesota one being the most obvious example. Um, I think... I think there's enough you can point to on Dallas's side that could go better. You also have to, while doing that, say like the stuff that's not going well for Boston has to continue to not go well. Uh, so it's a pretty narrow, uh, pretty small needle to thread, but I'm not going to call it over yet. I mean, 3-0, 3-0 it's over. But I, I, I think Dallas has a really good shot in game three. Just, and I mean, like, I'm sure you talked about all this, but I, I was curious watching the game, like, man, like some of the, you know, Boston shot quality just seems objectively better. And that that's borne out in, you know, just their open threes and wide open threes. Mm-hmm. Cause, but Dallas is like getting enough of those. They're just shooting like 25% on wide open and even worse than what was it? 22% on open threes as, as designated by NBA.com. So like, yeah, you could shoot, you could shoot a lot better. Dallas could, you can make some free throws. Luca spoke after game two of like, he put it on himself, which is kind of ridiculous, but saying he missed some free throws and he did have some turnovers. He can clean those up too. There's enough to not just shut the door on it, but yeah, like Boston's the better team has won games, not playing its best and is probably going to hit its best level like once or twice here before we're done. So it's, it's a long shot for sure. I, I can't say it's over. I guess you could, I, I it's over. I'm going, I'm going there. Uh, I don't mean to dismiss what Dallas has done. I just, I'm running out of, you mentioned that some things could go better and role players might tend to play better at home. And so, you know, PJ Washington has made uh, two, three pointers in this series on eight attempts so far, or whatever he is. He's shooting 12 and a half percent from three. Um, so he's only made, he's one of eight, excuse me. And like, so you might just get better shooting from guys, but I just, I don't know, like Derek Jones Jr. Is he going to shoot better? And the volume's not even super high. Are you just going to jack up? the PJ Washington volume, the Derek Jones Jr. volume. Are you going to uncork Tim Hardaway Jr. and hope that that works? I I think I might be contradicting what I said on the other podcast about it where I couldn't, I just, actually, I'm not contradicting myself. I'm adding to it. I don't see what the answers are for Dallas at either end of the floor Mm -hmm. at this point, where I was more focused on like, what are their answers going to be for Boston's defense? And it's just, I think there are some things that they could still try. They could focus on getting out and at least semi-transition more. And we saw a little bit of that in game two where it's, oh, we know Luke is not the guy necessarily bringing the ball up as mm-hmm. often. So that's going to catch Boston a little bit more off guard. And Dallas's offense, especially at the beginning, it was better when they were just operating faster. Are they built to do that? Like we saw PJ Washington have some moments where it's okay, he can get by guys on the ball. That's not his strength. The only thing I look at on offense, aside from, okay, shoot better on wide open threes that maybe they could do, is can you get to a point, and we saw this, like, we just haven't seen it a ton, is can you, you you might have to set two screens where it's, okay, can you force Boston to switch, and then you're going to have another screen set so that you can actually go after Christos Porzingis or Mm -hmm. Al Horford. So the guy who's actually, excuse me, the guy who you know is going to be on Porzingis, like using him as the screener, the guy that Porzingis is actually going to come out on, We I think we could stand to see even more of that. And, like, Luca played well, in game two. And you could look at his individual numbers when he's being guarded by Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown. And like, he's been fine, but like the overall team offense is suffering so much. And I don't know what the answer is there. And then conversely, I like the way that I, everyone focused on Boston's three point shooting after game one, they had a bad by their standards, three point shooting game in game two. This has been more about their relentless driving and being able to put Dallas in rotation and the reads that are being made off that Boston has an 11% assist rate on drives through the first two games. Do you know who led the team that led the league during the regular season? I think it was the Cavs were at 6.1%. So that's just an astronomical assist rate on drives, especially if you're going to compare it to what Boston was doing during the regular season. So uh, yes, I don't know what the lineups are for Dallas's perspective that are going to be like, well, let's keep Jason Tatum. Let's keep Jalen Brown in front of us type deal. And then, okay, even if you do that, it's like, well, Drew Holiday's like, he's been hanging around the dunker spot doing damage from there. I, and maybe can you know can Dallas sprinkle in just more like cuts away from the ball to get things moving in the half court when Luca does have the ball? I just 
I'm sure there are people smarter than me that might have more answers, but I look at both ends of the floor through these two series and I say, Jason Tatum hasn't had a trademark offensive game. The playmaking's been there. The rebounding's been there. The defense has been there for the most part. But Jason Tatum is going to have a night where he just goes off. Are you planning on winning that game? <laughs> I just think watching, I, I do think your point about Porzingis and Dallas attacking him is is correct. And like oh, the they, other thing is he did get injured. We didn't mention. Right. So we don't we, know what well, it's, it's questionable, I think, now yeah. for game three. But like, Luca got up a couple threes by making sure Porzingis was the, the the screen defender and was just in too deep of a drop and couldn't get out. And Luca got up a couple threes. So Dallas is like, the problem is like that might be the only point for Dallas to pick at. And so like if Porzingis doesn't play, he's already basically won you a game in the series by how good he was in game one. If he doesn't play, that's bad on balance for Boston. But it also probably takes a player out of the rotation that was like the one guy Dallas had any success going at. So. Like, I, I mean, that's a baby, a wash, or it's certainly not as big of an advantage. Whereas on the other end, Luca had several just total non-competes on defense uh, in game two. Kyrie is someone they can go at. Like you could either way, if it's like lively, better than Gafford off ball defensive series. This there's, is like, there's stuff for Boston to pick at. And I just, the reverse isn't true. That's the grossest oversimplification you can make. But like, that is just what these come down to a lot of the time. If you had to, do you think Dallas is more likely to to like raise its level on defense or on offense going forward in this series? Like which which end mm. is it going to be on where it's like, oh, okay, now they're back in it? Honestly, I, I think it's offense just because the more I watch their defense, just okay, like the Maxi Kleba thing isn't working. Nope. And so I like Der Derek Lively has looked like a rookie in this series. I'm not going to kill him for it. Daniel Gaffer was better in game two. But like the personnel, just the math isn't mathing. I think the only thing that they can maybe try in higher volume would be PJ Washington's our five. I just don't know what your best lineups are going to look like because now if PJ Washington's your five, you're saying Gafford, Lively, and Kleba, and let's not forget about Dwight Powell are all on the bench mm -hmm. in that scenario. And so it's all right. Well, what's your best lineup there? And just on offense, it's well, you have Luca. Kyrie Irving could play better. He's missed some. He's missed some good looks. But and I uh, this I do find myself. I'm repeating myself again because I asked this question to Grace, but the fact that it's still, and not that it's still an issue because it's not like they could change their roster, but how much of an impact do you think that Dallas's traditional lack of blow by speed in the half court, just like Luca and Kyrie are spectacular. Mm -hmm. They're creating separation or in Luca's case and Kyrie's case, getting to the basket in different ways where it's like you're either Luca's physical, he's crafty. Kyrie Irving has the voodoo handles and footwork, mm -hmm. but like you have to kind of grind defenses into a fine powder where it's, you're not going to have those. Even if you're in semi transition, Boston's top six players, for the most part, you're all going to feel comfortable with them. Apparently even your top seven, if you want to include Sam Hauser, who's had a pretty good defensive series too. Right? No. Yeah. I think, I, I just think Boston, it, this is just, this is just why Boston won so many games. And it's why every series to this point looked easy is they're They can play you five out all the time. And every single guy, when the ball gets swung to him and the defense is in rotation can do something with it where that just isn't the, you know, whether it's, whether it's the center that the Dallas has on the floor, whoever it is, Kleba's separate because he's going to space, but he's just not willing to shoot. And all of his shots have looked terrible because of that shoulder. So it's like you're asking Lively or Gafford to do something with it once Luca gets off it. You're asking if PJ Washington can, can do a little bit, but like you're asking Derek Jones to make decisions against a rotating defense. Like those guys can do that, but Boston has guys that'll kill you that way. And like everyone on the floor they have can just make decisions, pass, dribble, shoot, keep the, keep the churn going. Dallas, it's just, they don't have the blow by guys and they didn't need them until they ran into a team that is this good because it used to, like Luca could just get you the shots you needed. And that isn't happening now because Boston's defense is just without holes that, you and know, I, really. And I think this is less an indictment of to say the Mavericks are doing something wrong and just a nod towards. Yeah. And now I am repeating myself, but I, is there, a ch I don't know if I've asked you this, but do you think there's a chance we just look back on all of this as the Boston Celtics were inevitable and we tried so hard to paint them as something less because we were, I was concerned about a playmaking deficit even after the Drew holiday trade. And then also just, well, the East is the East. Look at how competitive the West is. The team that's going to come out of the West would most likely be better. I, that's kind of where I land on this because even with Dallas, you could say there are things to their strengths that they could be doing better. Like, you know, let's keep, what are they? They're getting killed when it comes to points off turnovers in this. And so can you limit your turnovers a little bit more? That might be low. They're minus 14 
in points off turnovers. Um, they're winning the second chance point battle. They're a plus nine there. They are, you know, Boston has doubled them up basically in fast break points, but they're a plus 16 when it comes to points in the paint. And so it's like, and you almost kind of, you got one of Boston's bad three point shooting nights out of the way and they, they won that game. I think there'll still be people. Wouldn't you agree that no matter what happens here, if Boston sweeps, they're still going to say they're going to cite the easy path. They're going to cite the injuries. They that didn't have to face teams. the nuggets or the wolves all, and the all this stuff. Something. Right. Yeah. There was no, I mean, which is like, sure. It's not, you know, and you compare it to the past. It's like, go back to, I don't know, Warriors Rockets in the conference finals. Like there were two great teams and one had to beat the other to get, to get to the finals. Or you, I mean, maybe some of those Cleveland golden state finals, just to be ta talking in recent terms, like, Sure. Boston hasn't seen a team that's, you know, on its level. I still think, I mean, so how is it a knock to say that you were basically unchallenged because you were so much better than everyone else? Like that's all you can control. It's similar to what the Nuggets were last year, right? Where yeah. it's, well, there's like, oh, they didn't have to go through any great teams. It's like, well, maybe Denver was the only great team. Right. That's a, that is. So to me, that is the correct framing of this season. Assuming Boston goes on to win it. It's just like, Sometimes there's more than one great team. That was not the case this year. Boston, there's no asterisk, no asterisk, no detraction, no nothing. Boston kicked everybody's ass, won 64 games, like basically was not unscathed through the playoffs, more or less. Like that's a great team and a great season. And we don't need to talk. Like, I really am not going to be persuaded by anyone that's like, well, and I, so on the opposite of the spectrum, I don't think we need to use this to say Dallas, like, why would you have made those trades at the deadline? Now this is someone who said they shouldn't have, like they're in a spot to where it's okay. Now you can build yeah. off this. And if your greatest foible at the end of what you did this season is we weren't as good as one of the best teams of all time, maybe just statistically speaking. Yeah. That's sometimes how shit falls. What can you do? Like, yeah, right. you were, you had the best shot of anyone to beat them by definition, cause you made it there. Like that's, that's as, you know, at some point it's just, you can only make your team so good barring like incredible circumstances, which is the case for Boston. Like that team is just ridiculous. You know, being second best is, the, is just the ceiling for everybody else. I think compared to Boston this year. <laughs>